Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. Oh, no. <laughs> Another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies? Are you kidding me? 343 episodes, Peter. When are we going to give up on this Flipping Houses for Rookies journey? I don't know. We might have given up now because my screen says schedule. It doesn't say that we're live. Oh. Oh, we're live. We Okay. <laughs> we are live. As long as you got, as long as you're sure. Okay, go ahead. Episode number 343 at Flipping Houses for Rookies podcast. The title says, Extraordinary Creative Real Estate Negotiating Shortcut Using Cost to Sell Math. <clears throat> Here's a description. You and I both know the hardest part of making deals is negotiating with the seller on how much you should pay without the seller feeling you are taking too much from them. Mm. And because you worked extra hard to get a seller's undivided attention, it is vital you know how to make a fair, balanced offer so the seller keeps giving you their attention and interested in what you have to say. Which means you can't fly by the seat of your pants in the first four or five minutes of talking to a seller who will pay you handsomely for helping them sell their house. And after talking to thousands of sellers, we have the perfect formula to get and keep seller's interest in listening to our fair, balanced offer and often say yes to our ideas. This one unique podcast is finally revealing the hidden secret we have used to make millions in real estate transactions. And now you can get all of it without any restrictions or tricks. But you are warned. It is a lot of information. So take notes and make sure you listen more than once. Hmm. That's right. It's a biggie. Hmm. <clears throat> so did your screen change? Are you live now? Or is it still it's, says no, schedule? No, it still says schedule. It usually says live. Interesting. Well, we're yeah. live and we have people here, so we're good. As long, right. as, I'm in, as long as I'm in the podcast with you. Yeah. So uh, if somebody's if somebody's on uh, Facebook or YouTube, can you just send me a message and let me know you can see Peter, that he's not blacked out or something like that? And Bill's just talking to himself again. <laughs> yeah. I, I found out, Peter. Yeah. Talking to yourself is okay. It's when you start answering yourself is when you start <laughs> highlighting insanity. <laughs> okay. That clears that one up. Yeah, but where the information came from, I'm a little bit skeptical because that person wasn't exactly the most sane person. Was he okay. talking to himself? Was he answering yeah. himself? Yeah. So, uh, Almarita Al said, we're all good. She can see you. Thank you, Almarita. You are present. Thank you. All right. So let's do uh, our typical housekeeping type activities for the next couple of minutes. Yeah. So, um, Obviously, we record this podcast uh, every Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. I say obviously because that's what time it is right now. Uh, so it's, we record the podcast Thursday mornings, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know that's not a good time for most people, but it works for Peter and I. That's how we've been able to do 343 <laughs> podcasts. While we record this podcast, we live stream it to YouTube, uh, to Twitter, and to Facebook. So if you would like to join us, uh, we would love to have you. You can go to one of those platforms and you could ask questions in the comment sections or wherever they allow you to uh, to uh, uh, put, put statements. Uh, they come right to my computer so I can answer them. 
Uh, I, I, I ask you to keep the questions to the topic we're talking about on the podcast because we have limited time here. And I don't want to go off topic. Uh, however, if you do have questions outside of the podcast, you can go to uh, WhatsApp Messenger. And we have a group called Let's Talk Real Estate. You can join that group. Uh, there's lots of people in there that are all over the country and have lots of experience. Uh, or you can go to flippinghousesforrookies.com and you can go to the support ticket on the top right hand side and you can send that message to me directly. The WhatsApp group is a group, the uh, the flippinghousesforrookies.com support, uh, those tickets come right to me. Um, and I answer those personally. I don't have a VA that answers them or anything like that. Also, you will notice that there is a link in the chat uh, that will, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a link in the description that will get you a bunch of goodies. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of this like before. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but those links go to individual pages. Uh, I probably, as soon as I get them through, I'm, I'm doing some stuff for Creative RA Replay right now. As soon as I get done with that, I'm going to make it so that you can log into a page and all the downloads will be on one page. So once you log in, then you can every week just go there and get the latest download. I have no idea why I was doing that because we have like a hundred links in there and they're so annoying to keep track of. So we're going to be changing that pretty soon. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing is make sure you subscribe to us or like us uh, or mostly subscribe. So you know that when we are, uh, we're airing our, our episodes, you'll know that we're there <coughs> and you can listen in while you're working. Okay. So enough of that garbage. Here we go. Okay, Pete. I'm going to start us off with talking about <clears throat> a very interesting concept I spotted not too long ago with my private coaching clients. Hmm. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if this is your first time, sorry about my throat. If this is your first time or you have not have been around before, I have the very, very fortunate ability of talking to a lot of people. Now, some people may not think that's a good thing, but mm -hmm. I have my own coaching group. I coach for another guru and help him and his group. Uh, plus, I do all the support tickets and coaching for Creative RAI Reply, which is software that my, me and my partners design. Uh, it's a creative real estate system in a box. It's amazing software. I don't say that because I developed it. I say that because we get so much feedback from it about how great it is. Um, so I have this ability every week to be one-on-one -on -one with our users. Um, you know, so I, you know, between the three platforms, plus I do all my own support tickets, plus I do uh, other type of activities. So I get a lot of feedback from students and, and rookies from what they're doing. Uh, so I have this, uh, uh, I feel I'm, I'm blessed because I always know what's going on, or I have my finger on the pulse of the market of like, what's, what's, what's new and what's not new, what's working, what's not working. So, and I try to bring that to this podcast. So uh, here's what I, here's what I figured out. And I just started talking about the last month or so. It's called the balanced offer. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and here's what that means. So it's a three part definition Okay, so it's got three parts to it. So what, what is a balanced offer? So number one, if the seller's asking too much money, right? Right. And, you're, and your buyer, which is not you, it's your buyer is who you're going to go find to buy the property, mm -hmm. won't pay that much. You can't make the deal, right? Yeah. Now, I had been talking about this. <laughs> Uh, for quite a while and i say how popular will the house be with your buyer right right so they're kind of the same language <clears throat> they're synonymous right so if the seller is asking too much money you'll be nervous because you'll be like how am i going to sell it how many buyers would pay that much money for it or how many right. buyers will be willing to do what the seller wants to do now unfortunate for this business the human race is cuckied <clears throat> we have uh a bunch of uh, interesting things that we could talk about with the human race. But one of them is, is that there's a total uh, weirdness in real estate. It's a complete weirdness. Sellers do not consider how the buyer will get money. Mm. 
So the seller will say, yeah, I want $250,000 for my house that's worth $200,000 because, well, blah, 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 blah. And it's got this type of wood and it's got that kind of roof. And you know, and, yep. and we have special special cement that we imported from Italy and, you know, mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Not taking in consideration where is the buyer going to get the $250,000. <clears> and most buyers will get money from a bank. And when you get money from a bank, or, or at least some somebody that has two hundred fifty thousand dollars, they're going to want to appraise the property and know that it's only worth two hundred. Why would they lend two fifty? No, they're not gonna. <clears throat> so that makes it the for, first portion of an unbalanced offer. It's like you can't do anything with this. Mm. It's unbalanced. It's too heavy or too too slanted mm. towards the seller, mm-hmm. and they're not taking in consideration the buyer at all. They just yeah. want what they want. They're being selfish and they just they just feel like because they have to sign the deed, they're in control and they're going to do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> That's right. But, you know, <clears throat> you can ask for what you want. Doesn't mean you're going to get it. Right. Which My is why. Right. Go ahead. But pick your teeth. My son had it figured out when he was like five. He was going to make a lot of money. And I asked him how he was going to sell balloons, right. you know, at the beach and at the park and at the parades. I said, well, how are you going to make a lot of money? He said, Dad, I got to figure it out. I'm going to charge $500 each. Yeah. There you go. Same thing. But he was five. He's excused. Yeah. These other guys you're talking about, they're grownups. And yeah, they, they should be more attuned to what's happening, but they're not really selling it. You know, some right. we're selling it or the realtor's selling it. Somebody's selling it. And they're just like asking. Right. So, so the point that I'm trying to make here is, is that <clears throat> this is why we say time changes everything. Mm. <clears throat> because sometimes the seller has to put the house on the market and get, you know, get, uh, what are they called? Yeah. Humbled? I call it humbled. Yeah. They need to, <laughs> yeah. they need to get a, a reality check, uh, or as we call radio silence. No, no. Activity, <laughs> right. Yeah. So the second way that you can have an unbalanced offer on the other hand is if your buyer's trying to lowball the seller, so mm-hmm. if we, as a transaction engineer, are trying to lowball the seller, right, mm-hmm. that doesn't work either because the seller feels like they can get more and will hunt for more offers until the reality comes in or they find an offer that satisfies them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is why I always say a seller does not want to sell you a house. Not at first. Of course, that's their aim. That's their direction. That's what they want. But they want they want to hear your offer. Like, what are your ideas first? Mm-hmm. So, if I have a house for two hundred thousand and I'm trying to sell it to you, and you're offering me a hundred, why would I do that if I have a pretty house and you're the first person I talk to to buy the house? Yeah, you'll be like, why would I do that? But if I talk to fifty people and they're all giving me prices between one hundred and one hundred twenty-five, sooner or later I'm going to come to the reality, like, oh. Well, maybe my price is wrong. That's right. Right? Yeah. Or they may find someone that will pay 225000 So you can't be too low either. And I will tell you, from more experience than I care to talk about, this happens a lot. And I'll tell you the reason why. And we're going to talk about this in a couple minutes. This mm-hmm. is the reason for this podcast. Okay? It's because the investor or the person making the offer doesn't know how to sell the house or doesn't have a formula or doesn't know how to figure in all the numbers. So they overestimate. Like, for example, I'll use $25 per square foot for renovations Mm -hmm. and I'll come up with on a thousand square foot house, $25,000, just as an example, where somebody else might come up and go, oh, that house needs $75,000 worth of work. They're they're $50,000 over because they don't know how to estimate the work. Mm -hmm. Right. Or they're not sure what the market will pay. So instead of instead of appraising the house for two hundred thousand, they'll be conservative and appraise it for one seventy five, and then do mm-hmm. all the numbers from there. So they're twenty five grand off, right? Yeah. So so by this is why I say you think education is ex- <clears throat> is expensive. Try ignorance. These these are you know it it, it 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 actually irks me. I don't accept it anymore. To be honest with you, I don't accept it. I stopped doing my forty five minute one on one calls. I I do them. I'll open it up for a week or two, and when I have time, and then I stop doing it. I don't do them anymore. And the biggest reason why is because people will call and ask me about my coaching, 
And the most idiotic thing in the world they'll tell me is, well, I'm going to go do a deal first and I'm going to use that money to pay you to coach. Mm -hmm. When, when, when I, what I just said are happening to that person and they don't even know it. They're being yeah. too conservative. They're, their, their offers are not balanced, which, by the way, the only reason why you don't get an offer accepted is you have an unbalanced offer. Mm -hmm. So the third one is the magic is a fine line between not giving the seller too much, but also not lowballing them either. Mm -hmm. Right. So there has to be a fine balance. Yeah. Right. OK, so this is all theoretical. Uh, and it, I hope it makes sense. Does it make sense? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, when you sell something, it could be a car, your house, anything, you're going to hope for the, the biggest number. So you're going to start high. You don't really know, right. but you're going to start high. And then, uh, I mean, that's what realtors do. Oh, I can sell you a house for X plus plus, right? Oh, right. hire that guy. Next thing you know, uh, ain't working. And what do they do? Drop the price, drop the price, drop the price. Um, so we have to get the number a little more right in the first place just to get in the door and get going. Or, or, or just do what I do, which which is not easy to do because you have to have experience. Say, well, what do you think the house is worth? Right? Or, to, to, the, to the seller. To the buyer. Oh, yeah. Once you get a house, say you buy a house for $175,000, yeah. you know, they'll ask you how much is the house. I mean, I, I don't do it often. I, I always pick a price because I want the price. Mm -hmm. But I do that with my payment. Like, how much can you afford a month? And how much can you afford for a down payment? Right. right. Okay, so uh, the question should be in your mind now, how does this play out when talking to sellers on the phone? Yeah, the, the way I'm looking at it is, how do you get this more realistic? You know, right. he's got pie-in-the-sky hopes, which you can't blame him. But we're trying to be realistic, what's really going to work. So it's like kind of a reality check, but you don't want to wait a month or two so the guy figures it out on his own because there you are on the phone and you got to figure it out. Right. Okay. So in podcast number 342, which is the one right before this one, <clears throat> we revealed our best tested script. Mm -hmm. right. I call it the solopreneur script. So you should go listen to that for the full concept of what we're going to use today. Yep, yep. Okay. The important thing to know is in today, uh, in today's world, you will struggle to get and keep your seller's undivided attention. Mm -hmm. And from massive research, from talking to thousands of sellers, me personally, it's been proven that about 97% of all sellers will not want to do a deal the way you want to do it creatively. Mm -hmm. So it's important to know two things. One, don't take rejection personally. <laughs> yep. And two, weed out the unmotivated suspects so you can uncover the motivated suspects. Okay. I want to, I want to stop for one second here. I'm going to, let me just pull something up on my computer. I was, I, was just, I was just working on this for my webinar. So be careful with your language because motivated motivation doesn't mean desperate. Yeah. Okay. So the definition of motivation is an internal state that drives people to take action that will fulfill conscious and unconscious needs or desires. So motivation is an internal state that drives people to take action that will fulfill conscious and unconscious needs or desires. Mm -hmm. So it's proactive. Yeah. Okay. Desperate means feeling that you have no hope and are ready to do anything to change the bad situation you're in. So desperate is feeling you have no hope and you're, and you're ready to do anything to change the situation you're in. That's reactive. Now, that could sound like a good thing to people. Like, this guy will do anything. He'll sell me the house. Can you uh, 
just real brief say why you don't like those and why, why that's bad? Because when they come out of the ether that they're in or the pain they're in, they'll regret. They'll mm-hmm. have shame, they'll have shame, blame, and regret. Yeah. Right. So you don't want that. <clears throat> you don't want us, you don't want them to feel like you stole the house from them. <clears throat> First of all, they're going around to your community telling everybody how you ripped them off. Yeah. But more importantly, it could because it happened to me once and, and I won by a landslide, but it happened to me once. It could provoke what they call a, a lawsuit that's called equity stripping. Mm. Meaning you took advantage of the person and took their equity. Yeah. And they could come back and sue you mm-hmm. if they're vindictive enough. So yeah. so the the whole core concept of my business model is everybody wins. So I, I mean, you remember, um, I don't know if I could do this without sounding corny. Uh, in the old days, you go into a nightclub, right? I don't know yeah. about now because I haven't been in a nightclub and I don't know how long. <clears throat> yeah. You go into a nightclub, you know, like 10 o'clock on a Friday night. Yep. And they have these tables that you stand at. You know, they're like four feet high and they're yeah. round. They're like two feet or three feet round. Mm-hmm. And you and your buddies or you and your girlfriends would like hang around that table that was like, that was a central point for the night. And that's yeah, and, you're where they, and you're standing there. And you stand there. There's no chairs. Yep. You're standing there. Waitress or waiter, usually a waitress would come over. And that's where you would get your drinks. That's where you would you know, do your money. That, that was like home base for the nightclub. And then you would go off dancing. You would go to the bar. You would go wherever. You would go to the bathroom. But you always came back to that table. Yeah. Right. So you got that table in your head, what it looks mm-hmm. like. So to me, that's a closing table. <laughs> You're right. So what happens is, just like in the nightclub, like you go to the bathroom, you come back to the table. You go dancing, you come back to the table. You go visit a friend, you come back to the table, right? So everybody comes to that table because there's a value there for them. So so you can't force anybody to come to that table. Somebody doesn't come to that table with a gun to their head. (laughs) So they voluntarily come to that table because they know when they leave, They've got the value that they wanted, Mm -hmm. right? So that's the picture of of a closing in my head. That's how I envision it. When I'm talking to somebody, I'm thinking to myself, what what value, what magnet, Mm. magnetic force, that's more like a magnetic force will suck them into that table, that they'll come on their own volition without fighting, without anything, because they know they're going to get exactly what they want. Mm Mm-hmm. That's how that's how I negotiate. It's like I'm looking for that magnetism. I'm looking for that that pull, that force that will be self-determined and self-inflicted. Yeah. Right? To pull them to that closing table that I don't have to do anything except just just have the thing that they want on the table. Yeah. And it will pull them to it, right? So that that's how I envision it. Now, what I find is really amazing about it when when done right cuz I've seen it happen between you and I, <clears throat> the person is actually surprised somewhat that you can do what you can do. Like right. you can do that. Like, wow, they didn't right. know. So that's right. really special. And then you really have a, a sale on your hands because you're doing something that they didn't even know could happen. That's really. And, and the amazing thing, the amazing thing that most listeners don't know, <clears throat> because see, here, here's the problem that you and I have. Mm. The listeners, you brought this up to my attention years ago the problem the problem with the rookies listening right now mm-hmm. and we're gonna get back to the podcast in one second uh, the 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 problem with the with the rookies that are listening right now they're focused on money they're doing this because they want to make five grand ten grand twenty grand there's a money related issue mm-hmm. right which is the wrong reason to do this because mm-hmm. if you're if you're money motivated you're not going to last very long but if you're willing to help sellers sell a house they normally couldn't sell help buyers buy a house they normally couldn't buy you'll make money mm-hmm. right so when you get when you get that concept it's kind of like dan kennedy the big marketing guru says the plumber thinks he's a plumber no he's mm-hmm. not he's a marketing guy because uh-huh. if he doesn't have people to do plumbing on or for he's not in business Right. So I say that about so so the problem we have is is that people that are listening to us are money focused. That's why they're here. 
So they think the transaction's all about money. Mm -hmm. The oddity is, is that very, very, very many, I don't know the percentage, I would say it's probably north of 50 or 60% don't need or don't want money. It's not money. Money, they, I mean, money is always in the end of it. It's like food, you know, no matter what you do, you have to eat, right? No yeah. matter what you do, you need money, right? So money is always at the end of the trail. But the point is, is that's not the motivation, right? I mean, I've had people like practically throw keys at me and say, I can't stand this house anymore. Take it, please. And yeah. just have me take over mortgage payments. Yep. Right. Yeah. So the money is involved because they don't want to keep making the mortgage payments. But the real motivation is they just don't, they want the burden off them. I mean, I just did a transaction with, with a two family house and, and I did it, I did it with a relative and I didn't realize how impactful it was. And that relative tells me at least once a week about how, how I saved their lives because I took this property off their hands. Mm. Right. Yep. So that's how it works. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, so in, in podcast number 342, we talked about the script, the solopreneur script. And what that script does is within five minutes. All right. Mm -hmm. And you were the one that brought up the time because you say you average four minutes, 51 seconds because you're timing yourself. Within five minutes, you know whether or not you have a deal or not. Yeah. You know, because the script just gets right to it. So I'm going to go back for one second. There's so many salespeople and so many people that talk about you got to build rapport. Yeah. So I got, I, got, I got a word for it. It starts with an F and it ends with a K. Rapport. Okay. Because <laughs> you don't need that. You want to build rapport. Here's how you build rapport. <clears throat> you talk about the house that's it mm -hmm. you want to build you want to build confidence or you want confidence you want your seller to know you have they have confidence in you you talk about the details mm -hmm. i talk about this in creative re I replay all the time we have checklists in there so when you're going to do a slot deal you go in and open up the slot deal checklist and there's a checklist of all the steps you got to do all you need to do is read those steps, the next two or three steps to your seller every couple days. And that that's how you build confidence. That's how they get confidence in you because you have the details of what needs to happen. And I've given you those details and that builds confidence. Hmm. And then the third thing is to build trust. All you need to do is just have your words, not your actions. So you tell them, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. We're going to do this and you do it. And, and, and within a couple of conversations, they trust you. That's right. You know, think about uh, when you talk to bankers or realtors or lawyers, they don't do rapport. Right. The only, no, if you're stuck on it, because I almost can't not do rapport. You know how I do rapport? And it's in the four minutes and 51 seconds. They say something like, I'm retired. My acknowledgement is like, oh, me too. That's my report. The guy goes, I live in Newington. He goes, oh, I'm the next town over. Right. And it, that's the report. It's just how we respond. End of story. No conversations. Right. I got a granddaughter. Yeah, me too. How old? 10. How about yours? Three. End of story. Right. That's right. it. And I don't even have to do that. It's just that's how I answer people. Like, instead of like, uh-huh, I just say me too. End of story. It, it adds like 30 seconds to the conversation. And if you must do rapport, just do that and get it over with. That's just my two cents. Perfect. So, uh... <clears throat> all right, so the script starts out with, and we're going to get to the cost of sum. I'm going to show you how to use this mm -hmm. for the next 30 minutes. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. going to actually read you the script live. Yep. Okay. So the script, the, the, the solopreneur script, which is in podcast number 342, mm -hmm. we're not going over that script today. We're just taking the first part of the script. The script starts out with asking if the house is for sale. Then asks whose name is on the deed. Mm -hmm. Both are designed to make sure you have a seller and that the person can sign and that that person can sign the documents if they choose to. It's like 30 seconds. Yep. Right. Now, we ask the seller their selling price. Mm -hmm. So, just to do it real quick. So, hi, hi, Pete. My name is Bill Hawthorne. Are you Peter? Yes, I am. Could you get a couple minutes to chat? 
Oh, yeah, sure. Or actually, <clears throat> actually, I don't do that. Hey, Pete, this is Bill Hawthorne. I'm calling about the pro the house you have for sale on 123 Main Street. You got a couple of minutes to chat? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, good. Sure. So um, is the house still for sale? Uh-huh. Good. And uh, whose name is on the deed? Uh, my name. My, my name and my wife. Okay, good. Uh, so what are you asking for the house? We're asking 245 Okay, see how smooth it is. It's very conversational, very smooth, mm -hmm. right? Now, once the seller reveals their number, you respond with, well, the only way I can pay that price is if I make payments. Is that something we could talk about? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's pause for a moment. Because I want you to understand this is, and, and I know I'm covering more than the cost to sell here because this is, it's, it's a little bit deeper. I want you to understand the value of the cost to sell and what we're going to do with it. That's why I'm covering this in the beginning of this podcast. Mm -hmm. It's very important to me that, that, they, that the listener knows this. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I'm going to pause here for a moment is because I need you to understand what your job is as the acquisition person or the person that's going to make a deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's very important to know what are your aims? What are your goals? What are your objectives? However you want to call it for this phone call. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you need to find out is the house for sale, which we just talked about, right? Yeah. Second thing is we need to know, like we just talked about, you need to know, who can sign the documents? Because mm -hmm. you don't want to waste your time with, oh, I'm calling for my mother. She owns the house. Yeah. Right? Number three, you need to find out if the seller is willing to take monthly payments until you can pay them off. Mm -hmm. If they say no, it brings us to number four. If they won't take payments, they'll need to give us a discount. Yeah. Those are the, thing, those are the four main objectives you need to talk to this person. If they qualify for those four things, you then work on price, payment, duration, and deposit if they talk about it. Mm -hmm. But the purpose of this call, the first five minutes, is to find out if the house is for sale, if they can sign the documents, if they're willing to take monthly payments, and if not, will they give you a discount? If they don't meet that criteria, like Ron Legrand so elegantly says, whack them. <laughs> <laughs> With his right arm, he goes like that, whack them. <laughs> yeah, folks, if you're not looking, you should see this. The gesture he just made it was very Italian. It should have come from me, but Bill's got it going there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, they need to reveal this so you know whether your time is worth giving them. Yeah. Now, I am not going to go off on a tangent here, but I promise you, when you do this enough, you will realize, much like a person with a bullet wound walking into an emergency room and asking for help from a doctor, that type of help is what you're giving your seller. And they don't know it mm. because we're underground and most people don't know that we can do it. Most people have the false data that the only way to sell is with a realtor or for sale by owner. They don't know that they can do all the things that we teach you here at Flipping Houses for Rupees. Yep. So your job is to let them, you know, enlighten them and let them know that you can do that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so if they're not, if they're, if they don't have an open mind, and they're not willing to talk about that, then you had the wrong person. They're not motivated. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, uh, all right. So here's what happens. So you, 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 you did, you, I'm going to repeat it. So you, you, is a house for sale mm -hmm. whose name is on the deed for that price you're asking. The only way I could do that is to make payments until it's paid off. Can we talk about that? Mm. And if they say no, they say, no, I want all cash. Are you willing to give me a discount? Yeah. Well, yeah. How much? Of course. Now, here's the vital point. 
if they say they want a discount, this is where we this is where it gets clever for us. See, we use math that no one ever fights with. Math is math. <laughs> two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. You can't fight with math, right? That's right. Uh, there's just no disputing it. No, but they never think about it until we talk about it either, do they? Right. No. What we're, what we're headed into right now. They don't know what we're talking about unless you do this. So if they want a discount, okay, mm -hmm. I simply ask them if they sold a property, if they sold the property at their price, mm. do they know their closing costs? Mm -hmm. And 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 how much they'll net once the deal closes. Like what's right. the check in their name? And almost, especially if you're talking for sale by owners, almost 100% of them will say, oh, 6%. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> which is not correct. And they are they are, they are in, in for a shock when they get to their closing statement. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So, yeah. so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a very unusual thing that I've never done on this podcast. I don't think I, that I can remember. Now we've got 343. I don't remember every single podcast, but as far, I've not done this in a very long time. I'm going to spot out the little script that I use to negotiate the discount when using math. Mm. Okay. I'm not yeah. even going to role play. I'm just going to read the script to you. Mm -hmm. And this is the part I didn't put it in the chat. I'm not, I'm not typing the script out for you. I'm not giving it to you. Get off your lazy ass right now, listener. <laughs> Pull over to the side of the road. Stop working. Listen to this podcast again and write it down. Okay? Mm -hmm. Unless you're a creative REI reply user, it's in there. Mm. It's the only place it exists. So here we go. So at this point, I've, I've asked them. They, they told me they don't want to take payments. They said they want all cash. And I've asked them, would they be willing to give me a discount? And I'll ask them how much. And they're like, well, I'll give you 6%. Or they'll give you an answer. I'll take off 5000 It's never the number. They're just toying with you. Yeah. So here we go. Okay, Mr. Seller. Are you saying if you don't sell for blank mm -hmm. $200,000 $200, you won't sell hmm. answer hmm. answer okay keep in mind when you sell for all cash there's fees associated with the transaction hmm. and we call these closing costs plus on an average it will take 30 to 90 days to close and get paid. Are you willing to wait that long? Oh yeah, by the way, that's if it closes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some statistics you should know. The cost to sell runs between 12% and 15% on any transaction. In fact, if you go to Zillow these days, it will show you the same thing. Mm -hmm. But let's break it down a little for you. Here are the numbers. 5 to 6% is normally... The realtor fee. But if you don't use a realtor, we consider this much to marketing the property. You may not know this, but about 88.7% of all for sale by owners end up listing with the realtor. The main reason why is because they don't have enough prospects to qualify for their house. 
This comes from a scarcity of potential qualified buyers or a lack of marketing. 3% is for repairs. And if you think your house needs no repairs, think again. See, what happens is the buyer's inspector comes in and has to justify his fees by finding things wrong with the house. So if your house was built more than five or 10 years ago, the building codes have changed. And the inspector will spook the buyer with his report on these building codes. Which means now you're left with doing repairs you don't really need to make <clears throat> or giving the buyer money at the closing. Which is, which, let me put it here, which is this 3%, uh, I don't know why it says that, which this 3% is often referred to as bribe money. <laughs> If done correctly, it will keep the buyer in the deal. Then there's 3% for the actual closing costs, which is for the closing agents, attorneys, property tax prorations, water bill prorations, sewer bill prorations, convenience tax, etc. Convenience tax is 1% in most places. This is a total of 15%. But let's say you're super savvy <clears throat> and could get it down to 10%. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, most people think they can. <laughs> So I ask you, do you have enough equity in your house to absorb these closing costs? Mm. Okay. So how was that? You know, there's a lot of elements that we might have gone into in the past here and there. But the way you, 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 you strung it together was very uh, logical right. and real. It's, uh, we've done this in houses with people. You've done it. I've been there a few times. I've done it. The look on people's faces when they actually do all the numbers after, you know, wow, it's like they're sh almost shocked, but relieved to know because they don't know. Okay. So I'm coaching you right now mm -hmm. because you asked me this question the other day. Mm -hmm. And I actually changed it in Creative REI replay just for you. Mm -hmm. And everybody else will use it. Mm -hmm. So you start the script off. Just to reiterate it, start mm -hmm. the script off with is the house for, is 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 the house for sale? Whose name is on the deed? What's your selling price? The way I can pay that amount is with payments. Okay, you don't want to take payments. Are you willing to give me a discount? And then you just read that script I just gave you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, now watch this. Mm. You say to them. So, do you have enough equity in the house to absorb the closing costs? Mm -hmm. That drops you right into a conversation of doing multiple things. So, for our listeners, I'm going to come back to you in a minute. For our listeners, what you're going to do is you're going to want to negotiate. At this point, you made them aware that they're only getting 85 to 90% of their asking price at closing. Yep. Which means if you if you promise to pay that amount, you're giving them top dollar. They're not discounting anything for you. They're giving you what they would get if they mm -hmm. were to sell the house to anybody else because mm -hmm. of the closing costs. The closing costs are not your problem. And also, you can do a slot deal, an option deal, and a rent-to-own deal on 10 to 15% discount. So any one of my top three deals, the slot deal, the option deal, or the or the or the rent-to-own deal, mm. 
right? And if you don't know what they are, go to flippinghousesforrookies.com, go to the bottom of the page and just opt in and I should explain all of it, right? Slot deal is, is, is a sandwich lease option transfer, which is very similar to, to uh, wholesaling lease options. Yeah. Right? Yep. So <clears throat> my point is, is that you just automatically built in a discount for you to be able to go make your money because those numbers I just gave you, the actual hard cost for your buyer, if you do your work, is the 3% for closing costs. You're going to do the marketing. You're going to deal with the repairs. You're going to, you're going to deal with all that. The way you deal with the repairs is you you find a buyer that's going to do it. You're going to sell it on a handyman special if it, if it needs some work. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have all those problems. So you're eliminating 12% of the, of the 15%. So yeah, there's 3% closing costs when your buyer goes to sell, but you get your buyer to pay for that. Mm. Because if they want this house, that's what they have to do. All right? So so by using this script, if you do it correctly, you could do one of two things. If they want all cash, well, first of all, if they want payments, you could do a slot deal because that's a two-year deal. Mm -hmm. And if you go to other podcasts, you can figure that out. So we tell them we could do it in two years and you make five or $10,000, much like wholesaling a lease option. Like I said, mm -hmm. if they're not willing to wait two years, then you could pay them all cash. The way you do that is you sign an option agreement. So let's do an example. Suppose yeah. you, suppose <clears throat> you have a $200,000 house and you read them that script and they say, and they settle on, yeah, I think you're right. It's 10%. So 10% of a $200,000 house is 180 grand. Yeah, it's taking 20 off the top, you're at 180. Sorry, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I yeah. skipped ahead. Well, yeah. taking 20 off, yeah. So 200 times 10% is 20 grand, like you said. So you're going to pay, you're going to promise to pay $180,000. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. You could take that $180,000 option agreement and go market the product, market the house on Zillow, market Facebook, market Face, wherever you can find to put it. For cash... For one hundred eighty-five thousand mm. dollars, means you make five thousand dollars. Don't try to sell it for two hundred. If you try to sell it for two hundred, you're going to be like every other house in the neighborhood. Why would somebody come to your house unless they like it and buy it from you? Mm -hmm. No, you need to have an advantage. You need to have a unique selling proposition. And the unique selling proposition is is that you're fifteen thousand dollars cheaper than everybody and all the other houses in that area. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna you're gonna attract attention and make five grand. Oh yeah, by the way, if it's anything like the last year or so, you'll yeah. probably end up with a bidding war and get up to 200, 205,000. Who knows? I didn't want to say, but it does vary if it's a buyer's market or seller's market, and you can just adjust a little bit, you know. You know, you can get a little more just the way things are so now you're not buying this property, you controlled it because you got an under an option agreement for a hundred dollar, a hundred dollar option consideration deposit. Mm -hmm. So you now have this property under an option agreement and you're going to go get the cash. You're going to sign a 90 day agreement, which by the way, a 90 day option agreement is better than signing a six month listing with a realtor. That's right. And, and by the way, if they sign the option agreement with you first, they can then go get a realtor later because they can just tell the realtor that they, they have to take you out of the contract. If you sell it, you're not paying a fee. Yeah. They're not, the seller doesn't pay a fee. It's called an exclusive contract, right? So, so you could take them out. But if it's already listed, you can't do that because the realtor has the rights. They yep. deserve it. They got to them. They got to the seller before you did. They deserve their fee. Right? Well, that's not hardly fair. We'll let them play the game with us. They won't let us play the game with them. Right. <laughs> right. But that's that's how the contract goes. Now, if they if they if they uh, have a fifteen percent, if they give you a fifty percent discount, one five, a fifteen percent discount, and they're willing to let you go seven years, which is possible. Mm -hmm. You have yourself a nice sweet deal because now you can go, you can make money now, money monthly, money later. The money now would, the, so you buy it at, at, we'll say at 15%. So now you're paying, uh, now you're paying 170 because 15% off of 200,000 is 30 grand. So now you're paying 170 or promising to pay 170, right? If the monthly yeah. payment, you, so you could, so now you can go sell this house for 210 or 220 on a rent to own. Mm -hmm. So you got $50,000 worth of 
equity. Plus, you can on a two hundred thousand dollar house, you get five percent down. You get ten grand for money now, and hopefully, you can make twenty or twenty five percent worth of cash flow on your payments. So you'll make three four hundred dollars on your payments, and you'll have fifty thousand dollars in the back end mm -hmm. because you did the script correctly. So, when you start the script, you go right into monthly payments. You go no. After you do the cost to sell, you can back into mm -hmm. monthly payments again if they're willing. Yeah, but the difference is in the very beginning, if they want two hundred thousand, they're thinking two hundred thousand. They're not thinking maybe that they're only going to get one eighty or one eighty five or something. And once they know that, they go, "Oh, wait a minute, maybe they'd be more willing to do something in the ballpark of the full price if we can." Or you could pay more, or you could pay more, which is what we've done. So we'll pay one ninety for a two hundred thousand dollar house because they gave us the more turn they give us, the more money we'll pay. Yeah. You know, the more 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 time to pay them, term is time, right? The more the more months we get. So I've had people tell me they give me ten years. I'm like, I'll pay you your full asking price. I'll give you two ten for the house. Yeah. Right. It it provokes that conversation. Hmm. Does that make sense? No, it does. Um, you know, we were talking about the cash discount, but it also clarifies the monthly payments for people too, or the, right. you know, that whole thing. Because at that point, they're not thinking. I've talked to people on the phone. I want full asking price. And I ask, well, how much do you think you're going to get after closing? I don't care. I want full asking price. Some people are so dumb, sorry, that they don't even think how the numbers are actually going to fall. So they wind right. up with more in their pocket. So right. this helps explain what's going to happen. So they can make a more educated decision, not just some emotional reaction. Oh, by full price, blah, 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 blah. As a side, it's a, that's correct, Peter. As a side benefit, if you were to go list this thing as a, not list it, but, but put it on, bring it to the market as a slot deal, where you're going to just mm -hmm. wholesale the lease option, or an option deal, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to, in other words, you're not going to keep the property. You're just going to make your profit and go. You're going to do yep. it within 30 days. Yep. Think of this. How many people are going to inquire about that house? More than one. Mm -hmm. So you're going to build a buyer's list. Yeah. Now you have a buyer's list. What do you think is going to happen when you talk to your next seller and you say to them, oh, I have 35 people. I have 85 people. I have 185 people. I have 500 people that are looking for a house just like this. What's going to happen to your negotiating skills? Yeah, they, they're going to like you. Right. Well, that's part of what a realtor would say. You know, we have buyers. I've talked to realtors when I have a house to sell. I have friends, right? We have friends, realtors. They go, hey, I got a house. They go, like, I might have one guy. One guy? Right. You know, it's not like they don't have. But we would actually have more because you said it earlier, didn't you? Like, no, maybe you didn't. It's just, there's a lot more people looking for rent-to-owns than cash right. purchases. There's right. a lot more. So our pool is bigger. So we would have a, a bigger to impress the seller. See, here's the confusing part about our industry. Mm -hmm. The realtor is, is a misnomer. People hire a realtor thinking they're hiring a consultant to bring them through the transaction. Mm -hmm. A realtor is not trained to do that. A realtor is trained in realtor school on how to find the buyer, do the purchase and sales agreement and secure the deposit legally so it doesn't get stolen. Mm -hmm. That's what a realtor is trained. I know I went through realtor school. Mm -hmm. The realtor is not trained to go through the transaction. They're not taught in realtor school how to do a transaction and the details and the steps. Now, the good realtors that do, you know, 20 plus deals a year know the best thing that they can do to get their money is to consult. So they've been through enough transactions that they can they can forewarn the person, hey, you need to do this, hey, you need to do that, hey, you need to do this. My youngest daughter right now is buying a condo. Mm -hmm. Actually, let me rephrase that. My youngest daughter is paying for the condo that I purchased for her. Mm -hmm. I so bought the got, condo. No, yep. I, I went out on a Wednesday morning. This was, I, I my dad passed away on Tuesday night, or, or I forget what day it is, mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock in the morning, my realtor calls me in the morning. I found a place for Emma. Mm -hmm. I got in my car and I met him, right? And I and I went through the property, and, I, and I'm like, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. He's like, don't you want to talk to Emma? I'm like, yeah, we'll do that in a minute. So here's what I want to do. Blah, 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 blah. 
He's like, okay, we could do that. All right, good. Let's go back in the house. And I went back in the house and I called Emma and I'm like, hey, I found a place for you to live. And I put her on FaceTime. Yeah. She has, that's the only time she saw the house. I wrote the contract. She paid the deposit. We, neg we negotiated. Now, I'm telling you, while I was there writing the contract for an hour, three people went through that house. Mm. Other people. Yeah. I'm bragging because I'm being a dad right now. I mm. took all of my 30 years experience and I wrote that contract so the seller would say yes. And they about three days later, they said yes. Mm. Okay. So, I don't know why I'm telling you that story. So, the... Uh, I, I had a point to the story and I totally forgot it. So uh, it was I, such a good story. We did too. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I know what it is. So the, the point is, is that this realtor was my acquisition manager for a little while. So he knows how I operate. He, and he's in, and, and him and I did a bunch of deals. We do deals together or have done deals together. He was a coaching client for two years mm -hmm. or something like that, three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've helped him buy houses. We've done renovations together. We've done all kinds of stuff. So he knows me. Right. Yeah. The point, the point that I'm trying to make is, is that had he not had that training, I don't think he could have bought that house for me because it was the way we wrote the contract. Mm. So he brings value to the table because he has experience outside of just finding the buyer. So, so when you're, when you're, up against the realtor, you have to realize their only job, they don't even know their, they don't even know what they're getting paid for. What they're getting paid for is to find a buyer. Unfortunately, most of them don't know how to find buyers. Their way of finding a buyer is to put it on a multiple listing service, which is the MLS. Another realtor comes by and says, oh, I have a buyer for your house. And then they split the commission because one person yeah. listed it. The other person found the buyer. There you go. Because you know, it's like it's like using calculators in school. Before yeah. that, you had to know what to do. They'd have to hustle around town, advertise it, market it, you know, work at it. Now they kind of list it and sit. Right. It's like a calculator. And, and there's books right? that are written that the way you make a lot of money <laughs> as a realtor is get a lot of listings. Yeah. So so it's a set it and forget it thing. So so that's why we hear a lot of people complain. A lot of sellers complain. Well, the realtor didn't do anything for me. They didn't do open houses. They didn't do that because for whatever reason, the house, I mean, there's only two reasons a house doesn't sell. Mm -hmm. It's overpriced or it's dysfunctional. Yep. A third reason could be environment. But if it's priced correctly, then even, even the bad neighborhoods. You know, my wife used to tell me that when we're driving mm -hmm. around looking at houses. She says, this is a bad neighborhood. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, what's your definition of a bad neighborhood? <laughs> Oh, well, look, you know, the, the cars and the boarded up. House, and no, my definition of a bad neighborhood is, is all the houses are boarded up and nobody lives there. That's a bad neighborhood. Mm -hmm. If there's people living in houses, then I have a chance to sell those, those type of people a house because they live here. Right. Yep. So there you go. All right. So that's my point. So, so, so you get to let's back up because I want to finish this off before we leave. Right. So the question is, so do you have enough equity in the house? to absorb the closing costs? That's the last question. Yeah. Right? So the first way that we just talked about is, is how you could do a slot deal, sandwich lease option transfer, how you can do an option deal, get them all cash, or you can do a rent to own where you can get money now, money monthly, money later. So um, when they say they don't quite have enough money or equity to cover that, that's a slot deal. It has to right. be. Right. And if they say, yes, I do, could you ask a question like, well, are you willing to lose fifteen or twenty thousand dollars? Would you like to make make that as more profit? However you do it, the point is is that you walked into those three deals. Mm. Now, there's a difference between you and our listeners. Mm -hmm. Because now you have some some experience. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the beginning, when you're starting this 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 <laughs> venture off. You're just dialing for dollars. You're just looking for that motivated seller. Yeah. This, what I just explained to you between podcast number 342 and now this podcast number 343 is how you do that. Mm -hmm. Don't change the scripts. Do exactly as we spoke of and you will find a deal. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of dialing the phone enough times to find a motivated seller. Now, once you start getting some experience, you've done a few deals, you kind of know what you're doing a little bit or more, 
you're going to want to start to convert deals. Mm. So at this point, right, once you end the script with what I just told you, like, do you have enough equity in this house to do that? Mm -hmm. Right. You could ask questions like, mm -hmm. do you have a mortgage mm -hmm. on the house? Mm -hmm. it, it dropped you right into that. Right. Yep. Oh, okay. So they say, yes. You say, how, do you mind if I ask how much you owe? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and then you could drop it into okay. So, what are your monthly payments? Yep. Right, and then of course Bill's favorite, because I'm a subject to whore. Yeah. Would you be willing to sell the house for what you owe on it? Which drops us right into subject to talk. Mm -hmm. And if they say. No, you say, okay, how much would you be willing to make? How much do you want? So if yeah. they owe 140 and they're like, I want 160, so you want to make 20 grand, right? Mm -hmm. See, the script drop you right into this conversation. Yeah. So it's not like you need another script. It's just you need to continue the scripts that you have. Yeah, because if they say, like, they don't have enough equity to cover the closing costs, then you just find out more data. Well, tell me what's happening. And I mean, they don't know where we're headed with things. So, I mean, you can even say something as simple as, well, if you give me a little more information, uh, I'll see if there's a way I can buy your house and get you the most and With the script, you don't even need to do this. It just does it all for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's back up. Hmm. So, so you go, so you go, and I'm just giving you different scenarios that I'm not covering today. So you say, so, do you have enough equity in the house to absorb the closing cost? Yeah. So the first way was we talk about the discount so we could do a slot deal, an option deal, or a lease option deal. Mm -hmm. Or a rent, uh, a rent home. Right? Mm -hmm. Or you could drop it down to say, you do you have a mortgage in the house? Mm -hmm. tell, you, tell me how much it is. Mm -hmm. What are the payments? How much do you owe? What are the payments? Yeah. Would you be willing to sell the house for what you want, which is a subject to deal? Mm -hmm. Or you may ask them, do you have enough equity? They're like, yeah, it's free and clear. Yeah. Now you just drop down into doing an owner finance deal. Right? Absolutely. So it's all in the script already. You just need to know the layout of the script and how to do that. Right now in Creative REI Reply, this script is there, and then I have <coughs> I have other scripts for the subject too, and I have other scripts for this for the for the owner finance if you need help from that point, mm -hmm. right? Oh. But it's just as simple as what I just talked about. Well, look what a game changer it is. Um, I mean, we used to go to people's home and drive around a lot, but we you know it's, it's just better to do as much as you can on the phone and before you just you know drive around for nothing. But it's such a game changer to take the person from not understanding what the cost to sell is and what that means, the tens of thousand dollars either way, if he does the right deal, so right. that you can talk about those other deals. Right. He's not just thinking a number in his head. He's thinking the details of what am I actually going to get. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. This is what makes, this is what gives you confidence or shows that you have confidence to your seller is these details. Yeah. All right. So I want to be very loud and clear here. I want to okay. back up. I want to be very, very, very loud and clear. If you're new, you don't get into mortgage information and you don't do the, because if you notice, I went from the top of my scale, which is slot deal, sandwich list option. Yeah. It goes down to option. And then it goes to rent to own, which is uh, staying in the lease option deal. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to getting a deed, which is subject to, then it goes to rehab retail, wholesale owner financing. So we don't, we don't, I mean, if it gets into a conversation where they just want to sell it and needs repairs, then you can, but this script will do the same thing. It will walk you into any one of those. So in the beginning, for my Rick, my rookies listening right now, just do the top deals. Just do the sandwich lease option transfer, the option deal, and the rent to own deal, because those are not legally, legally 
uh, you'll stay out of legal trouble. Once you do getting the deed, wholesaling, uh, I'm sorry, rehab retail, wholesaling, and owner finance, those deals, you put a deed in your name. Yeah. So in the beginning, stay away from those deals, and you won't have to worry about losing your entire savings or your, your life savings or making a crummy deal and paying for it for the next 10 years. You don't have to worry about it. Yep. Just stick with the lot with the top mm-hmm. three deals, the slot deal, the option deal, and the rent to own. Right. And you will you if the people will be pissed off if you back out of it, but they can't legally sue you. It's just a lease with an option. And yeah. and if the option says you have the right, an option agreement is the right to buy without the obligation to buy. So right. it's telling you that you can back out of the deal. Right. As soon as you put a deed in your name. It's a whole different story. You can't back out. Okay. Yep. So just stay away from those deals in the beginning. But the way the script is laid out now and the way it's written, the right way it's written in five minutes, you can qualify. And if you continue, it can not only take you through, it takes you through all seven of the deals. Once you get down to, do you have enough equity in your house to pay the closing costs? Mm -hmm. Right. Is it clear now? That's very good. Like the first three deals are controlled with an option. The rest are purchased with a deed. The options don't com- overcommit you if you need to get out. And they're no more pissed off because I've had a couple that went that way. They're no more pissed off than the realtor says it didn't sell. Okay. Because right. they'll see what all the work you've done. They'll see what you've done. And they know you've worked to put it, bring it to market and all this stuff. They know you weren't just sitting around twiddling your thumbs. Right. So it's not even like, oh, my God. It's just like, okay, fine. Right. Move on. Yeah, the best way to stop that is, is you report into your seller at least once a week and tell them what you're doing or show yeah. them what you're doing. You send yeah. them an email, you call them, whatever you do, right? Yeah. So, so um, my final note is that do a couple of these slot deals, option deals, uh, rent to own, which are lease options you stay in. Do a couple of those so you can go through the process and see all the steps of what it's like to do a transaction. Because there's a bunch of steps you're not aware of. Like, for example, if you're on this podcast, you're probably trying to figure out how to buy a house and never thought about how you're going to sell it. Mm -hmm. Most people are like that, right? So this will put you through the process and the details. You do a couple of deals like that, get a few bucks in your pocket, you know, five grand a piece, five grand a deal or 10 grand a deal. You know, you get 10, 20, $30,000 in in deals put together. Now you can pay for some education. You can pay for some coaching. You could do whatever you need to do. More importantly, you'll have experience, and then you can start converting the deals and start taking deals with your de- with uh, with the uh, with the deed, and and yep. owning them because yep. you'll be more comfortable. So don't jump in the deep end first. You know, let's wait in the shallow end a little bit and get you get you up to the point where you can take responsibility for these deed deals and not have to worry about. Them. Okay, so I hope that helped you. Uh, that's my that's my uh, my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel wherever you're watching us or listening to us. Uh, don't forget to leave us a review or like us if you if you're on uh, any of the social media platforms. Uh, hit us up with a like um, or dislike if you didn't like us. Um, and then um, make sure that you uh, what was I going to say? Oh, if you have any questions, go to uh, uh, WhatsApp Messenger. Let's talk real estate is the group. Or go to flippinghousesforrookies.com and you'll find the support button on the top right hand side. And don't forget about the link that's in the description so you go get your goodies. Okay? We're over and out. We'll talk to you on episode number 343. Have a good week, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.